listen up. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast belong solely to the podcast participants and not to any participants, employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. You know, for fun. So lighten up and enjoy. Stomping Jen. What's your name? Sawtooth Frank. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I forgot it for a minute. Welcome to the Soft Serve Podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so happy you're here with me again. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Yeah, we have two really interesting guests I'm really looking forward to talking to. Yes. It is um, Stacy and Brian Rosano from Fetch Brew Co. This is a um, brewery, like a craft brewery right here in our hometown Woo-hoo! of Belchertown, Massachusetts. Yeah. And they make a whole bunch of really awesome beers, Mm -hmm. and they do some interesting things in the beer-making space that I learned about, that we're going to ask them about. So, well, let's learn about it. Without further ado, shall we? Yes, Okay. All right. Um, What button do I hit? It's this one, right? Yep. Okay, here we go. Creamy, delicious ideas without the creepy truck. Stomping oh no. Jen. I'm feeling the need to sort of sing to you. Fine tonight. I don't know why. It just hits me out of the blue. You're so full of um life. <laughs> you inspire me. Oh, thanks. Yeah. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, good. Let's say hi to our guests, uh, Stacy and Brian. <laughs> hi. Hi, Stacy and Brian. Hey. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Thanks for joining us. Um, I want to start by just asking you to tell us a little bit more about yourselves and Fetch Brew Co. Sure. I'll start. I'll start. So, um, well, you know what? I think I might take a few steps back and tell you how we actually got to, to Fetch Bruco, and that tells a little bit about ourselves to start. Um, I am, I'm actually a social worker, um, and I'll let Brian tell you what he does for a living in a minute, but for, for 25 years, um, been a social worker, and about 23 years ago, when Brian and I first met in our tiny little 375 foot square apartment, um, we decided we wanted to brew some beer. You know, one of those kits that you get in a box. Oh, yeah. And our neighbors couldn't stand us because the smell (laughs) was really bad in this small apartment complex. Um, Fast forward to 2017, we took a giant break in brewing beer because life really got in the way, you know, career for us, a couple of crazy dogs, house, everything else that kind of goes with that. Um, and about 2017, we looked at each other and we said, God, why did we ever stop brewing beer? Yeah. Um, we love it. And we try to, we gave it another really big shot. And um, here we are today, really on a different scale and enjoying it. And in between 2017 and now we had a lot of people said, wow, you should really try to make a go with this because you're brewing some pretty good damn beer. (laughs) So here we sit, Ryan. (laughs) Yeah. Hi guys. Um, uh, My name is Brian. Started brewing uh, by default when I received that home brew kit. Uh, Stacy was referring to as a, a present. Uh, blew up the kitchen a couple times and uh, <laughs> learned quite a bit of what not to do. Um, sure. Over the years, uh, we have really just tried to keep it simple. Um, you know, 
when we uh, when we finally got back into doing this, um, I, I think really it was about just kind of marrying the two things that we loved the most about our lives besides each other. Uh, um, <laughs> and that was, um, you know, beer and our, and our love of dogs. So, um, you know, the little, uh, little company, uh, sort of kicked off and we started brewing and quite honestly had some real happy neighbors for, and we still do actually. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. And I, I, I used to brew beer um, in those white buckets um, in the kitchen, yeah. and I had a few blow ups, like the boil overs. I like, I think I, I think I ruined one of the stoves in one of the houses we rented once because I had a boil over, yeah. you know, like yeah. the uh, the wart boiled over and just flooded the entire stove. But I was like, I love the smell of brewing beer. Like it's such a like um like a like su- hops. yeah like a sweet earthy like smell well just like the malt and the grains and like what do you love about brewing beer because you must you you have to love it because it is a hard like messy process that is true <laughs> good I I'll be honest with you um I was first introduced to to craft beer a little while back and was handed my first um, uh, craft beer from a, a local um, a brewery that uh, has since you know grown by leaps and bounds. And I, I immediately was turned off by it. And oh. uh, over, the, over the years, just sort of you know, kept chipping away at it, kept chipping away at it. And um, eventually just really developed a, an affinity for, for the real um, just the, the the extra flavor that goes into craft beer. I mean, that's not to say that, you know, you, you don't look at some of the, the larger you know beers and once you, once you get to know what goes into making a batch of beer, hardest thing to do is replicate it. Yeah. And you, know, you look at some of the larger, more commonly known beers and they really are a, a true feat of discipline and and um, adherence to a to, you know an age old recipe and between you know from the from the water chemistry to the uh, you know, the, the malt to the to the the grains and, and, and the hops and the specific temperatures and all the little fine points that goes into making that beer when you, you know, you have some of these beers and whether you're in Massachusetts or you're in California or you're in Canada or Mexico, you know, you're drinking that beer. And while that may not be the most flavorful thing, you know, flavorful thing you're, you're drinking, it truly is amazing to think that, you know, a beer of that scale tastes the same no matter what yeah i think to to answer your question the long the long way around that question was (laughs) i i like the discipline of it really do yeah um i said you can really brew a a small little five gallon batch and hit a home run and it's like whoa this is really good then you come back you know a couple weeks later after everybody's you know relieved you of it (laughs) And um, I try to replicate it, and it's like, huh? <laughs> Where did yeah. we go wrong? <laughs> we screw this one up. <laughs> now, as as small craft brewers, have you had to put a lot of work and thought into how you're able to replicate your own recipes? And is it ha- has that been a challenge at your scale as well? Because I would imagine you may not have access to some of the um, industrial equipment or whatever that makes. Um, replication may be a little bit easier. So is that is that something you've had to grapple with as craft brewers, or can you can you do that kind of quality control on the craft level and replicate um, easily? A little bit of both. Um, you know, I would say a few years ago we struggled with it quite a bit. Um, we've definitely learned so much, like Brian was saying earlier, about water chemistry and pH. And um, I think a big thing now that's really helped us over the past couple of years is even though we're still super small at a one barrel system, 
we were able to upgrade to a fairly professional one barrel system. And we have seen the efficiency of our brew house go from, you know, 70% to close to 90%, maybe even a little higher. Yeah. So we've, we've definitely learned from some other brewers. I'll tell you it's the most inviting community. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. They really are great. It's not this huge competition. It's instead it's, you know, Oh, Hey, I tried this and don't do that. (laughs) Or or do you need any equipment? You know, we can, especially throughout COVID, it was such a challenge for everyone. Um, you know, if you need anything, don't don't hesitate to reach out. So, you know, I, I think that we learned a lot from, from other brewers that helped us to be able to replicate now compared to, you know, three or four years ago. Um, we also have taken a few classes through UVM mm-hmm. and through um, the World Academy of Brewing, which was super helpful. So, on the small scale, we were able to buy, you know, a, a fairly professional pH reader. And it's all of those little things that help you to be able to recreate those beers. And at this point, I think we have about a good 10 to maybe maybe 12 beers that we've successfully been able to replicate many, many, many times. So they that makes us feel really good about it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... I just want to piggyback real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Just on something that Brian said earlier about, you know, the first craft beer he tried and was like, yuck. Um, that was probably what, geez, almost over 20 years ago. And I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, I, Pete's Wicked Brew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's no longer in existence, but that was, I think, the first real craft beer that we tried and we thought we were the coolest things ever. Yeah, um, I remember... But, I remember back in the day drinking a Pete's Wicked like maple brew they used to make. Like I was like, "What is this? You can put like I I don't know. I was very naive when it came to like mm-hmm. beer and exposure to beer styles. I was like, "What is this? Didn't this they is get bought by Sam Adams. Pete's. At some point? I don't think. No, I don't. Maybe they got bought and subsumed by somebody, but." Dog, maybe dogfish dog or something so, like that. Yeah, yeah. They were purchased, and then I think they just stopped the name Pete's Wicked. Yeah. Um, I don't know if maybe they kept some of the recipes. Yeah. Um, but that was our that was certainly our first experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Went from the college days of like Natty Light to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was on a good night. Yeah. Well, we've been fortunate, I think, because we live in the valley, right, where there's a lot of craft brewing going on. Like we used to, I mean. Berkshire Brewing. Berkshire Brewing was a big one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I wanted I wanted to ask you. So the company is called Fetch um, Brew Co. And you mentioned um, and I'm looking at your logo here, and it has a what looks like a boxer on it. A beautiful looking dog here, um, illustrated. And you mentioned you love dogs. So um, I'm assuming the name for Fetch Brew Co. came out of your love for dogs. Um, Tell us a little bit just about your relationship to dogs and like what dogs mean to you as a family and as people. And I want to mention that like um, slurping, slapping sound we all heard a little bit earlier were the were the were the two dogs that um, Stacy and Brian live with. I think drinking water. If my ears yes. didn't deceive me, yes. <laughs> you know when you're really when you're trying really hard to keep them quiet, they're just like woohoo. That's when they're the loudest. Yeah, that's when they're the loudest. How, how but, can we, exactly? How can we make some noise? And you know what? Actually, guys, this might be a quick timeout if you don't mind, because one of them is pawing us right now to, to go outside. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. That's totally Can we fine. Take a time out? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Okay. You got him. I, got, yep. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen, especially after that peanut butter bone. Oh my goodness! Hence the water drinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and did they both hit the water bowl? It sounded yeah. like it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Are they um are they sibling dogs? Like are they, they are. Yeah. You know something? They're um they're a couple of rescue pups from um Scranton, Pennsylvania. And we had two boxers prior to these guys when we first moved in our home. And um they both lived one was a rescue, one wasn't. They both lived to about 13, which is pretty good for a boxer. Um, you know, we couldn't, couldn't bear to think of any other dogs. And then, you know, within six months, we couldn't bear not to have dogs in the house. Um, so 
we were hoping to be able to get two. It's, you know, it's really hard for rescues to place two dogs together yeah. and to see two dogs broken up. You know, it's just so hard on them. So we ended up finding these two guys and well, brother and sister. And um, while they are siblings, they couldn't be any more different. <laughs> <laughs> Our, our male bear is about 80 pounds of like solid beef. This dog is yeah. just like really and the biggest, wimpiest baby in the world. And our female Jade is about 55 pounds of like just fury. She kicks his ass. Mm. <laughs> um, I mean, she's she's a sweetheart, too, but she is um, she is business. Yeah. <laughs> So let me tell you, they are spoiled. They've been, at, they've been with us now for about five years and okay. spoiled beyond belief. How old were they when you got them? They were a year. Okay. Um, so pretty much fully grown. They were um, emaciated. Unfortunately, it was, mm. it was a pretty bad situation. I know it's hard, hard to even think about. Um, but we just look at it like this is that now they have the best life they could mm. ever possibly have dreamed of and hope i'm just really hoping they don't remember all of that stuff mm. that happened five yeah. years ago <laughs> and you had you had boxers before these two boxers we did what is it did. about and and it's a boxer on the logo right correct what is it about boxers that you love so i actually grew up with a boxer okay. so i was you know predisposed to <laughs> <laughs> to boxer craziness. <laughs> um, and you just fell in love with them too. I did. Yeah. Um, our first boxer, it was funny, you know, unique story about uh, Patton, our first uh, boxer. On the way to work, um, we had just moved into the house. Um, a couple of weeks later, on the way to work, I had noticed a uh, guy down the street had tacked up a, a homemade sign of what looked like a Rottweiler <laughs> with a big little sign underneath it that said boxer puppies. Mm -hmm. And so I told Stacy about it and uh, she drove by and, and we kind of had a little discussion about it, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And we finally said, all right, um, well, if we do get one, then I want a, I was a little bit of a snob. Uh, didn't really know all that much about boxers other than Stacy's. Um, uh, that I met towards the tail end of, of her life. But um, I said, I, I wanted a, a male. I wanted a brindle colored uh, boxer and I wanted the wishbone and the socks. <laughs> and so she said, okay, let's. But, uh, uh, he has to be perfect. Huh? <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's go see the puppy. So we made an appointment. We went in there. Wouldn't you know that there was twin brothers that were brindle, had perfect wishbones big white chest and socks. I was like, uh, how do we know which one to, to pick? Yeah. <laughs> Got to get them both. So, yeah. We, <laughs> we didn't. Oh. We almost did. <laughs> we almost did. Yeah. But um, now we brought, we brought Patton home okay. and he was with us for a long time. And uh, within know, about a year, yeah, give or take a year, um, we decided to get another, another boxer and we, we hooked up with a boxer rescue that was legitimately just getting off the off the ground, mm -hmm. and um, we went down there and uh, we adopted their fourth dog. Mm -hmm. So nice. they had legit, legitimately just started, and uh, we brought Shannon home with us. And she wasn't a, a one hundred percent purebred, but she had a. Uh, it was, she was a boxer master of the mix. Oh, wow. Wow. Paul Brindle. Her head she was a, like oh this my God. Big, yeah. a bowling ball for yeah. a head. She was mean looking. <laughs> she was, and she had an underbite and <laughs> whole nine yards. And um, she, we brought her on vacation one uh, one time to the shore with us. And the little kid down the street said, hey, mommy, mommy, look, here comes the junkyard dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah. But so she, that will be a name of yeah. the junkyard. <laughs> was, um, she was just a very, very gentle soul. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, Patton and Shannon had a good life with us. And you know, after you after you have two dogs like that, and you pour your heart and soul into them, and you know, you know, nature calls. And, and I think it was maybe about 
four months and we just said, you know, it's just too, too quiet around here. <laughs> so yeah. and we hooked back up at the Boxer Rescue and couldn't re- we couldn't re- realize or, or believe how popular and how successful the rescue had become at that point. Oh, wow. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it sounds like, I mean, being dog owners and these dogs are um, so meaningful to you that it inspired you to name your, your craft brewery after them. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, it's funny. We, um, our legal name is Bark Brew Co LLC. Um, but when we look to see whether that was trademarked, it was, it was taken mm-hmm. and, um, it was immediate. We looked at each other and we said, what about fetch? That just, you know, dog ball yeah. beer. <laughs> fetch. Let's play some fetch and have a beer. Yeah. And it just kind of, came to us and we said, you know what, let's move forward with this. And I think it, I think it just, it sounds kind of catchy too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and I, I, I've heard you before when you're saying, you know, people were talking to you saying you all should really do this and, you know, you make great beer, but where, what was that decision point for you both where you said, we're going to take this from the hobby space and like really try to launch this. Like, can you talk, talk to us a little bit about making that decision? That's all Stacy's story. <laughs> well, it's a little combo. So, yeah. um, again, we started in 2017 where we live now, uh, and we were doing five gallon batches and tasting good, making mistakes, figuring out what we did wrong, moving forward. Um, and, you know, I think both of us, maybe to late 2018, um, that's maybe when people started to say, wow, this is pretty good. And we thought, huh. (laughs) Um, Unfortunately, in early 2019, we had to take about a year and a half hiatus, or I'll say we, we slowed down a little bit. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in the beginning of that year um, when I was 46. And that, you know, that took priority, (laughs) clearly. And Brian and I both went into um, the mode of, okay, we're just going to take care of this. We're going to get you healthy again. And that that's what matters right now. So here and there, we did a couple of five gallon batches through that time period. But after I finished chemo and radiation, and was starting to feel better, we just looked at each other and said, let's do this. Life is short mm-hmm. and none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. So this is something that we love doing together. Mm. It's um, sure when you have those boil overs, ah! <laughs> <laughs> there might be a little bit of yelling and screaming and the dogs are running and it's mm-hmm. insanity, but it's something we really enjoy doing together. It brings us both happiness, just the process and then seeing other people smile and while they're drinking it makes us happy. So it really hit us that, um, yeah, let's let's make a go of this and and hopefully turn this into something bigger. There were a lot of little steps in between there sure. that took some time to, you know, getting your TTB license and, you know, your farmer brewer and getting through the town and so on. And that was a, that was a little lengthy, but I would say that was kind of the the defining point, which. Mm-hmm. made us take a leap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, here we are. I wanted to ask uh, for the people who may not know, um, like how, just like the high level points, like how do you make beer? Like, so how, how do we, how do we go from water to beer? What's that process like? <laughs> well, um, it's, it, it's, it's, a uh, um, when you sit down and you first start, there are, Really, the the basic ingredients, there's water, malt, hops, and yeast. Um, Making beer and making different types of beer, that's the fun part. Um, Realistically, just trying to put together uh, recipes and trying to figure out different types and experimenting and things along those lines, that's the part that's fun. and that's the, the, the piece that really uh, 
kind of is the is the home run is when you finally have it all kegged and carved and you sit there and you have that moment of truth and you, you have a sip of beer and it's like, Ooh, this isn't that bad. And the malt but, is the malt, the malt is from the, the wheat or the barley or some other type of grain, right? right? Like that's right. the thing that the yeast eats up to make alcohol, right? Right. Which is so, in the beer. Yep. So what you start off is with, with, with malted barley or oats or, uh, mm-hmm. any number of other types of, you know, rye and, and, and um, you know, it goes from, you know, the wispy, you know, fields that you see, you know, the farmers walking through, it goes through a, a malting process. And um, that basically is, you know, taking the seed of the, uh, of the plant and um, bringing it right up to the point, you saturate it with water right up to the point where it's almost a germination. And then, the malt house drains the water and, you know, kill and dries the, uh, the seeds. And basically what that does, it creates a little um, uh, pouch of starch and, and, and malt. And so when they harvest that uh, and, and they sell that for, you know, to a brewery, uh, the brewery will take that and put it through a, um, a mill and they'll grind it and they'll just, just enough to pop that little pouch yeah. and they leave all of the, um, uh, the, the, the strains and, and the grainy part. And that helps um, in the, the brewing process. But basically what happens is you basically make it almost like a tea. Um, you let it, um, it's called mashing and you let it mash for anywhere from a half hour to an hour, depending on what you're making, what kind of beer you're making. And, um, the uh, the hot water, the warm water at that point converts the starches in, into sugars. And once you have that, then you transfer from your 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 mash ton over to a kettle. And that begins your pasteurization process where you're you're basically um, killing any types of uh, Right. micro or anything like that that you you know might give you off flavors or otherwise spoil your your beer so during that boil process and what's unique to this area uh, of the country where you know one of the latest and greatest crazes you know called the new england ipa yeah um, brewers really started to take on the ipa and do some really fun experimental techniques with, with hops. Some of the hops went into the boil and extracted more of the, you know, the lupulin oils and and which gives you the, the bittering part or the bittering flavor of beer. And um, and I guess there's wide debate on where the whole New England uh, IPA craze began, but um, some of the brewers in, in this part of the country started to add the hops after the boil. And that's called with, dry hopping, right? Or well, that's that's considered whirlpooling. Oh, okay. Whirlpooling. So, yeah, so yeah, so the whirlpooling process is you actually cool the the what what I'm sorry, uh, rewind a little bit. When you're done with the boil or you have something called wort. Yeah. And that's the um that's all the the, the sugar, okay? Most uh, most good brewers will say they make a really, really good, really fine wort, but it's the yeast that actually makes the beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so depending on the technique and the, and the beer that you're trying to, to make or the style of beer that you're trying to make, you will then go into either a whirlpool edition or, like you said, a dry hop edition, which either takes place during the active fermentation oh, or okay. once fermentation has actually stopped. And that will really, if you're really looking for that, that really kind of punch you in the nose aroma, when you crack the, the beer can open, you do a lot of dry hopping. Okay. Um, you get more aroma than you do actual bittering characteristics from dry hopping. And you can really have some fun with that. The different types of um, hops that are out there, the you know the um, 
New Zealand uh, strains, some of the um, the West Coast uh, strains, you know, more tropically, you know, yeah. you know, type of stuff. And you know, that's the beauty of brewing is because the brewers are always just trying to do something crazy and new, and you end up with um, different techniques that you know realistically produce different types of beers. You heard, I don't know if you've heard of sours. Yeah, that's yeah. A whole, it's a whole different brewing technique. Um, and how important is the yeast in um, the process in terms of like maybe changing the flavor profile of a beer or, you know, how strong the beer ends up being? Is that really important in the process? It is. And actually, um, you know, even using the same strain of yeast, you know, time and time again, you can have different outcomes, whether they're little, uh, uh, flavors or little aromas based on the temperature that you ferment at. So, mm. you know, one of the most important pieces uh, of the brewing process, really, I would say, besides eliminating the oxygen in your in your your fermenter and in, in your your process, is temperature control. Uh, if you can maintain a temperature and a healthy environment for that yeast to do its job, you'll have a crisper, cleaner, uh, tastier beer. Um, and then if you want to you know, play around and you want to try a little something different, you can try, uh, you know, um, fermenting at a little higher temperature or a little lower temperature and That'll just put you a little, you know, spin. And so going back to our original discussion, that's why, you know, brewing a, a large scale macro beer um, is, is pretty amazing when yeah. you think about, you know, you crack a beer, no matter where you are in the world, it still tastes the same. <laughs> the Coors Light is the Coors Light, whether you're here or, you know, in Australia. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah. I went to the Coors factory when I was a kid. You those yeah, silos oh my yeah. god they're huge yeah so big yeah it's yeah. and it's interesting those um i'm thinking back to one time i decided i was going to try to brew like budweiser at home right and i ha wasn't i didn't i hadn't I was never a big like Budweiser drinker. I always gravitated more towards the craft beers and the heavier mm -hmm. stronger IPAs and stuff but I, so anyways, I brewed this style that the Budweiser is. It's like an American lager, I guess. Um, um, and I was absolutely floored at like how tasty it was, like and delicious. I was like, oh, whoa, this is like a really cool style of beer. Like, and it's delicious and it's light and I can have like a couple of them without falling over. <laughs> like, and I and that's when I really began to appreciate too, like, you can have like the you, the popular styles that the big manufacturers make, brew them on a smaller kind of like scale and they can be like absolutely mind-blowingly delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. I mean, and every so often, you know, when it's 90 degrees out in the middle of, you know, August and you crack one of those beers and it's ice cold. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, uh, Stacy and Brian, where do you do your brewing? Do you have like a facility um, on your property? Do you do it in your? Do you have like a, a kitchen where you can um, produce food? And I forget what that's called. Stomping Jen, food safe. like a food kitchen. Yeah, like a commercial kitchen. Thank you, Stomping You're Jen. Welcome. Like, where do you make your? Where do you make your beer? So it's a it's a facility, but um, <laughs> it's a we'll call it a facility. It's really a twelve by twenty uh, shed on our property, uh -huh. and um, it's it's not it wasn't an, ex an existing shed. Excuse me, we did specifically buy it um, for this process in hopes that we could get off the ground, um, start really small like we're doing now, but we can tell you that we are already running out of space. <laughs> That's a good you know, problem so to have. It is. It's a, it is a good problem to have. And, you know, our, our hope eventually down the road, when we are really are able to get our name out there and to get our cans into liquor stores and to get more kegs in restaurants, what, what we really hope is to be able to open to either, either build or, 
um, use an existing structure to have a larger space for brewing, but also to have a tap room. Yeah. So oh, that yeah. shed is serving as well, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what kind of beers do you make? What kind of, what are the different like styles you brew? And I'm looking on your website and I can, I can read off some of these here. Um, uh, one's a, a, a bear's burnt peach porter. That sounds Ooh, good. That sounds good. Sounds really good. It's, yeah. That's, yeah. um, we use a, a, a smoked malt in our brewing process that we smoke ourselves where we take a, a, a very simple base grain uh, malt and literally have our own little smoker and we smoke maybe 20 pounds of malts uh, in one, uh, one session. And that to give you an understanding or a, an idea of what that end product is like, it's kind of like sitting around and smelling a campfire after it's gone out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you need, you need such a small amount of it right. because that yeah. flavor of smoke can be yeah. very overpowering. Yeah. Yeah. So we use a little bit of smoke malt in, in our porter recipe. And then what we will do is we, it's typically a seasonal beer. And mm-hmm. we do it you know, towards the fall one. The fall calls for a little bit heavier, darker beer yep. and you know, a little more substantial. But we also do it around peach harvest. So we'll we'll rack that uh, finished porter in one of our fermenters over uh, a bunch of uh, peach, um, kind of boiled and semi pureed peaches, mm-hmm. uh, where the boiling process really releases the um, the flavors and some of the sugars. We'll have a little bit, you know, once we introduce that, the yeast will kick back up and it turns out a little bit of a higher alcohol or percentage because the sugars from the fruit will reactivate the yeast a little bit. But in the end, what you're getting is just really um, a, a hearty beer with a smoky, sweet um, finish. Yeah. And it's just a hint of sweet. It's yes. not... It's yeah. overwhelmingly like, yep. you know, can't candy like right, beer. Exactly. It just it, it finishes a little differently and leaves a nice little uh you know residual uh, sweetness in your mouth when you take that last sip, which is it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot of different styles here. You do you have you brew a stout, um, a wheat beer, um here are these New England IPAs that we talked yeah. about yep. before. You got two of those on your site. Um a uh, Brindale that um and I'm, and I'm like these names and they seem like they're related to dogs. That's right. right? So that's Absolutely. in line with the the fetch uh, Wait, so brew co. Brind ale like Brind a brindle, ale. but yes. like it's an ale. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a brown ale. Um, and uh, and I see this here, um, Stacy. It's the the pink paws lager um, from the. Um, I'm gonna say it. I like to swear that the fuck cancer yeah. series. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you and and you have a little narrative here about how this beer this beer is personal for for you as a brewer and as a business owner. Um so that's great. Um so are do you brew other types of beers than the ones that are listed here on the website? Do you have other offerings? Okay. We do um we do a Hellas. Um we do a wit beer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um that just to go back to the the um, pink paws really quick though, what what's really unique about that is we add a little bit of hibiscus, oh. which adds yeah it adds a tiny bit of flavor, like yeah. a hint of sour, just just a hint of sour, but it makes the beer pink. So oh. what we're trying to do with that is really just have it out around October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month to be able to have drink pink. Yeah. Um, so, but a and again, we have um, a couple of different types of stouts that we uh, that we make. Um, we have a, a coffee stout, a milk stout. Okay. Um, we have a couple of different lagers that uh, that come out. You know, Hellas is a, is a, is a German mm-hmm. lager. Um, Kolsch. Kolsch. We do a Kolsch. You know, we do a Kolsch around um, you know the winter time, which we. Uh, we had a little bit of cinnamon and cranberries to it, which um, oh, that sounds good. Has a, it's a <laughs> the nice base um, 
um, beer to start with. And it just has a, a nice little finish to it. it has a very, you know, pretty cool little taste. And mm-hmm. again, all these things are all just, you just catch just a, a subtle hint of it. It's nothing that's going to overpower you. Um, we did, um, for our neighbor, we made a blueberry IPA, you know, which was oh, wow. fun to do. Um, actually we, we have it. Yeah. No, they won't see this. Yeah. On the podcast, yep. So Stacy's holding up a growler, um, and the label's got a bunch of blueberries on it, and it's called—I can't read it. It's called um, read the name for oh. me. Oops, sorry. Busta's blueberry. Busta's there we go. Blueberry. Busta's the bomb. The bomb. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I love it. And one of the things I'm noticing, and and is that um, your—I'm looking, scrolling through the beers. And they all seem to have what I will call like reasonable and manageable alcohol levels, mm-hmm. right? Like some of these beers you get now, some of these IPAs you can buy are like 10%, 11, 10, 12. 11% alcohol. Mm-hmm. Like, did you make a conscious choice to offer beers that are like, you know, like I said before, you can have a couple without falling over. Yeah. Like, was that a conscious decision on your part as brewers? Absolutely. Because we felt the very same way. I said, oh, you know, sometimes I'll... I'll just say, oh, look at that label. It's a cool label. And I'll see that it's, let's say, New England IPA. And then I'll look and I'll say, oh, it's a double. And I, and to be honest, I actually put it back. Yeah. <laughs> just because I'd like to have a couple. Yeah. Well, and you totally respect, you know, brewers for being able to, you know, push the envelope uh, of their brews. And um, there are certain people who, you know, won't drink anything less than a 7% uh, beer. And that's fine too. Um, yeah. But yeah, we did we did make a conscious effort to try to keep the ABV low, manageable. Um, you know, we want people to enjoy the beer, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, be able to you know have you know two or three you know in one setting and and not get up and feel like wow, you know, I'm really buzzed. Yeah. Or even worse. So yeah, uh, I think you can have the, the enjoyable uh, flavors and um, enjoyable beer experience without, you know, all the, the crazy, you know, side effects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a favorite um, beer to brew or a favorite style to brew? Like, do you get super excited when it's time to brew this particular beer? We, I think we have two different ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the wit beer that we do. It happens to be one of my favorite styles. So um, it's a specific yeast for, for that beer. And we, it, it's a little bit different the way we do it. We actually hop a little more than a traditional wit beer. So it's not bitter per se, but there's a little extra flavor in there. And you go, huh, what is this little extra flavor? So because it's my favorite, that's why, that's why I like to, but yours is different. <laughs> I, I, I like the Brindale. Um, you know, I, I kind of tend to lean um, towards the, the, dark, the darker beers, um, porters, uh, stouts, um, but I've really kind of come around and really enjoy the brown ales. Um, and uh, I just like the Brindale because what we try to do there is, you know, bring a little bit of um, uh, brewing technique with the color and of the beer uh, to match the coats of the dogs. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that brown ale uh, really, you know, if you do it right, it, it has a little black in there, it has a little tan in there, it has a little amber in there. And we play around with the, uh, the, uh, the malt um, and the grain bill to achieve that. Yeah, it seems um, like a complicated beer to brew because in your description, you're, you're, um, you identify that it has characteristics of a stout, an IPA, has some citrus in there, it, you know, it, it must... Must be a complicated recipe. It sounds like it's a little, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like that. It took us a little bit of a a long yeah. while to get there. Yeah, that was, that was one. That was one. We just uh, we had to dial in and dial in and tweak it and tweak it and dial it in. It that took us quite a bit of um, you know trial and error to, to to dial in, and I think the finished product came out pretty good. Well, you know what I think is nice about it too. Um, is I think sometimes people tend to shy away from darker beers, assuming that they'll be very heavy. Yeah, um, yeah but it, but it's actually very drinkable. Mm-hmm. Again, 
pretty low ABV and um, it's, it doesn't feel heavy. You know, you're, you're not having it and going, Oh God, I'm so full. I can't have another one. So I think once people give it a shot, they realize that it's not this completely dark, dark, heavy beer. Yeah. 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 Is there a style? Is it, Oh, go ahead. Stomping. Jenny. I was just going to say when we, when we were drinking, I did enjoy a brown and like a nut brown ale. Like yeah. Those browns. are some of your favorite styles. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask, is there a style of beer that you've kind of been thinking about brewing you haven't gotten to yet that you're looking forward to is there a like a white whale for you out there a style you want to conquer <laughs> that you haven't been able to to get to so i don't know if i want to um but i will say you know sours are the thing now mm. just like when new england ipas first started to get you know I was going to say famous, but <laughs> popular, I guess. Um, it, sours are, you know, they're so in now. Is it a fad? I don't know. Do I like them? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never been a big fan of that style personally. Like it, I just, I have only speaking for me, I've never found them that drinkable. Like I could have one and be like, eh, I don't really want another one. Yeah, e exactly. And I don't, I don't like to pucker when, when I'm drinking a beer, well, you know, that's for like, uh, you know, a sweet tart candy if you want one. Um, but I, I get that a lot of people love them and I respect that everybody, you know, that's, that's what makes the world go around. We all have different tastes and I think it's interesting and I think it's great. So I think it's more of a challenge for me that I want to learn how to do it, even though I don't like to drink it. <laughs> how about you? I Personally, I I just have fun brewing them all. Um, I like when we do the little small custom batches for people. The the, the my favorite part about it is um, just interacting with the people that are placing the order and learning about their dog and thinking about a beer that they will end up enjoying um that i can get creative with and hone in it might be a you know something on the border of a stout versus a porter it might be on the border of you know maybe an ale versus a um you know a lager or something like that but i i enjoy the brewing process i enjoy um you know the final product obviously but I really enjoy interacting with different people. Um, yeah, and that, hearing their story and, and hearing um, about their, their 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 pets and their loved ones and their their families. And that's your dedicated brew offering that you're talking yeah. about. Um, and on your website, um, people can can go there and enter some information and begin the process of getting one of these custom batches made right can you tell us a little bit more about about the process and like how that works in, in terms of um working with a working with a person to 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 get it just right for them that sort of thing and like do they get a picture of their dog on the label like how does it or or a pet or whatever how does that so all work custom cake is that what you're talking yeah. about yeah they make yeah, custom. Yeah, they make yeah. custom, custom beers. Custom beer, like uh, for events and stuff. For whatever we're, we're asked, we're going to ask them. Oh, you yeah. Can see, uh, <laughs> I know it's it's a podcast, but we're holding up this can yep. here. Um, this dog uh, was named Charlie, and um, this was a present to um, someone's neighbor whose dog had grown up with their family and. Uh, they wanted to kind of immortalize Charlie. So yeah. we did a, a case of beer. This one happens to be a Belgian IPA. And, um, you know, listening to the owner, or I should say that the person that was going to give this as a gift uh, about how Charlie impacted his family, that was the most rewarding piece oh of, of this whole thing. And that's so a beautiful you, you, can. That's a beautiful can. Brian's holding up. It. Um, yeah. It's got some like really nice writing on it. The dog is nice and prominent, and it's a beautiful yeah. looking can. Do you guys do your own graphic design work? <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Um, for, yes. So for these dedicated brews, small mm -hmm. batch for folks to get. You know, for doesn't just have to be dogs too. I mean, yeah. we, love, yeah. we love all animals. Yeah. Um, or even if they wanted it for a. Uh, 
a family member. We, yeah, we did one do for it. our neighbor's 60th birthday. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. So yeah. these we do on our own um, because it's such a small scale. Yeah. Um, you for know, sure. for yeah, for our regular cans that aren't dedicated, those are by a, a real professional. Yeah. <laughs> so the the labels themselves, I have a lot of fun with these, and I have to be honest with you, this is this is just as much a skill as yes. making the beer. So you've got some you've got some serious graphic design skills. Those are yeah. really nice yeah, looking labels. Nice. So, yeah, so we, we will basically what we'll do is we'll take the dog, we'll hear the dog's story, get an understanding for what the dog's personality is, um, what the dog uh, likes to do, doesn't like to do. Is the dog spoiled? Is the dog you know energetic? Is the dog lazy? Um, you know, in this particular one, this this kid was a uh, duck hunter and his Labrador was, you know, by his side all the time. So we made him a um, thing called Birdshot IPA. So we, you know, mixed in a, you know, a, a duck blind scene with uh, the ducks. And, oh. and then this one here that we showed you, the Growler. That's a beautiful this was label. Our, this, is a, this is the first one we did. This is our... Um, Bust, we, Buster's we, Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Bust is the bomb, yeah. Yep. And so on this label here, we'll just put a little um, memoriam, you know, uh, uh, comment section there. And everything that you get from us is coming from Jade and Bear. So it's uh, it's as if the two dogs are talking to the dog. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I love, I love this. It. I love this oh. idea and this offering, you know, and what a, what a wonderful thing um, – as a local craft brewery to be able to offer to the community. I love this. I will just (laughs) go ahead. Say, and you know what I'm about to say. (laughs) Surprise me. Um, I don't. So for our wedding. Oh yeah. uh, How many batches did you brew? I brew like 15 gallons, 15 gallons. But how many different beers? beers? Three, three separate beers beers for all the wedding, all for all of our wedding. And our friend made ours the labels. (laughs) <laughs> this oh, was cool. yeah. 20 years ago <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and one of them was our cat at the time but i think for oh, people wow. yeah for people listening to this though i mean it, it really i it, i think it's a it, you know for um for your friends and family who, yes. who do drink like this is a really special thing it totally you is. could offer them i love yeah. this this is awesome yeah thank you yeah you know we just felt like it was really unique it, and it is. we knew thanks. We knew right off the bat this would be the combination of you know the love for the love of of dogs and beer. Yeah. And what better way to allow our customers to have a little piece of that for their special pet? Yeah, <laughs> I like this idea. I like this idea, and I'm like obsessed with like a CSA concept for you guys because you're so uh-huh. small, like a nano brewery, like. Yeah. You know, like. instead of trying to get into liquor stores, right? Like, right. I yeah. love that. Can I you do like that? I don't even know if you can <laughs> do that <laughs> legally. I feel I'm, like I'm going to look into it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted. I I wanted to ask you. Um, dun, 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 um, so, in terms of, are there are there beers and breweries um, that have inspired you or inspired your work? Like when you think of a. Like your 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 go to beer that you would you know go to the st- I don't know this might be a like stupid if you go question. to the store yeah. what's your favorite beer to get is that yeah. what you're trying to like, ask <laughs> like is there anything out is there anything out there that yeah. just inspires you as a beer drinker as somebody who loves the process I'm I'm, I'm when I go to the 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 store to to pick up you know a four pack and trust me I I, I like everybody's beer I mean it, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to just come from us or the stuff I'm brewing I, I get a kick out of everyone's. Um, to me, it's like picking out a tie. If I've ever gone to, you know, a wedding and you need to go buy a new tie and, you know, you stand there in front of the wall, like a, you know, a lost puppy. And you're just like, Whoa, yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what I feel craft beer has become a little bit. And so for me, um, I, first thing I look for is, you know, what kind of beer is it? What flavor is it? A, is it a stout? Is it a porter? Is it an IPA, lager, uh, Belgian IPA, whatever. So I'll try to find the style beer. And then I'll be honest with you. I, I like looking at the labels, Yeah, you know, yeah. They're fun. Um, I like, I like, uh, 
pub crawls and, and going from brewery to brewery. Mm -hmm. We've uh, uh, gone up to um, Burlington, Vermont, uh, Portland, Maine, um, and you just you get a, you get a good sense of what's out there, what's new, who's doing what, and mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. I will say that I don't I don't tend to really like barrel aged beers that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend to think that they're a bit um, too alcoholy or, or or syrupy for my for my palate. But yeah. um, you know, uh, again, when you sit there and you look at a beer that's been fermenting for five years. <laughs> You get in, you're intrigued a little bit, yeah. you know, what, what mm -hmm. does that taste like? And, um, I have a go-to fiddlehead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she does. Yeah. She has it's, her go-to, um, yeah. love trying. I love mm -hmm. trying different beers yeah. though, but if I'm, if I just know, all right. Yeah. The go-to is fiddlehead. For yeah. sure. I had a yeah. go-to beer. Well, we used to uh, try. let me, um, uh, uh, rogue mocha porter. Rogue mocha porter. <laughs> Stomping Jen love that one. They don't even like sell it anymore. You <laughs> no, can't even like find it. Oh, <laughs> you can't get it. Um, has there ever been a style of beer that you thought was a good idea to brew, but it turned out it was just like a disaster, and you didn't like brewing it, or it just turned out bad? Like what comes to mind for me? I don't know. A couple of years ago, I tried this beer. It was from Rogue, and it was brewed from yeast cultured from one of the brewer's beer beards. <laughs> And as a as an amply as an amply bearded oh. man myself, I was like, "Oh, this is this is interesting." I mean, it was good. I mean, but it, I suppose it could have been a disaster. Did you expect it to taste like I expected beardy or something? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did. That's over line. So, yeah. yeah, has there ever been a style that you thought was like a good idea to brew, and it just was a disaster? I love disaster stories, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually recent so that's 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 why we still do certain beers on a five gallon base because um you know you don't you don't want to go all in the first time around even though we're even the one barrel is still tiny you don't want to go all in with all that grain and all those mm -hmm. ingredients and and wait all that time for for fermentation and find out that it's disgusting um, <laughs> so we do a rye ipa which is actually really good um we thought we'd get a little fancy and add some cinnamon to it yeah. really bad <laughs> Just, and you know what though we 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 like to torture ourselves a little bit we still have it in mm -hmm. our shed we've got a big industrial um fridge out there and we keep it out there. We haven't thrown it away yet. And every once in a while, we're like, okay, we have to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> like penance. It is. It's penance. It's a reminder. <laughs> yeah, it could be there. <laughs> yeah. And it's just as bad every time. And I'm like, all right, we just need to dump this. But then it's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's 10 o'clock. We'll do it this weekend. And it's still sitting there. Yeah. It's still sitting there. That's that, that was probably the worst. But yeah. Although we threw the batch away. Oh, oh, we, what was that? Yeah, we we screwed up on that one. When we first started, we were brewing and we were using a, a nylon bag. <laughs> and this is our kind of our first foray into trying different uh, you know, step step mashes at different temperatures. And well, we turned the you know, we turned the, the broiler or the flame on and we still had the, the bag in the in the kettle Oops. and we melted the bag. Oh and, no. Uh, <laughs> that horrible that's yeah. not good but, the, <laughs> but those but those are like the lessons you learn oh, from, yeah. right as as craft right. brewers you yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. never do that again this is totally <laughs> bringing me back memories oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah it was a kitchen. yeah it was a disaster um <laughs> so um where where can people go to try your beers like how do people get are they out there in bars somewhere can they buy them from you like how do people get your beer so right now we're on, um, we're on tap at the yard tavern in South Hadley. Um, this is not right down the street, but we actually just did a custom brew for a bar called the gas bar in Lemonster. Oh, wow. And yeah, it's, it's actually going to be their beer, oh, um, nice. which was fun. Um, you know, we talked to them a little bit and they let us know what style beer they wanted, which was an American wheat. And they recently had a competition and had all of their customers um, go in on this competition to name the beer. 
Um, so we're still waiting to hear what the winner was. And what we'll do with them is they will, they'll have our tap, but we're going to customize it to represent their restaurant as well. It's a sports bar. Mm-hmm. Great, um, great owners, great people. And so and anyways, we're there. That's kind of a little extra bonus that it's that that beer you can only find at that restaurant and mm. you'll never find it anywhere else, which is pretty cool. Um, we're currently in the process of um, canning and hoping to be out in local liquor stores soon. So we are brand new. <laughs> yeah. Very um, cool. Have you gone to like the yard tavern or a place where your beer is and had your own beer like order? Yes. How does that, how does that feel as brewers? The first, the first time we went to the yard, um, we sat down and I was giggling like a school girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, can I get a fetch, please? <laughs> yeah. It felt weird. It felt weird paying for it though, too. <laughs> yeah. It must feel um, like hearing your own song on the radio, right, Stomping Jen? Sure. Like if you're an mm-hmm. artist or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's really neat. Um you know, there's, there's a couple other restaurants we're in talks with right now. So we, th- I just don't want to say it yet because yeah, sure. it's not, it's not a hundred percent, um, but it's, it's hopeful and it's exciting, but you know, I hope to visit those restaurants too and, and do the same thing, mm-hmm. sit down, grab a burger and ask for a fetch and it feels good. Yeah. Or just go to the website and Give us a shout on the, you know, through the website and we can, uh, we can fill orders and mm-hmm. uh, just contact us and just say, Hey, well, you know, what's on tap. So we can, so people can order, there. they can order directly from you. So if yes. I, if yeah. I, um if I wanted to get a couple, if I wanted to get a case of, I don't know how, I don't know how the ordering works, Stomping Jen. So I, <laughs> I don't know, but they can contact you if they're interested Absolutely. in buying some beer yeah. directly. Yep, we can do four packs, we can do cases, we can do growlers, we can do 22 ounce bombers. The only um the only limitation that we do have because the brew shed is on our property and just because of our zoning, um, it is delivery only. We yes. well, unfortunately can't have folks, you know, okay. to come pick up the beer. That's- that seems like a plus to me though. <laughs> like that you'll bring <laughs> it that you'll bring right. it to me. Like I, own, uh, yeah, your own little private drizzly. There you go. Like I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm not an anthropologist by any means, but I'm like absolutely obsessed by these um, traditions we have that go back like a long time, like millennia, right? And like the cheese maker, right? The the cobbler, like the the local beer maker, and like right. to be able to have somebody in the community, mm-hmm. you know, who can. You can order it from and they'll bring yeah. it to you. Like to me, it taps into like this this thing about what it means to be human and live in a community and like get mm-hmm. stuff from your community. You mean like buy local? Yes, stomping gin. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a that's because beautiful- that's like all I do yeah. is think about yeah. these things. Yeah, but I love it. Like I love that that is here in our town. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I how did you end up in Belchertown and how do you tie into the community here? Well, I, I will say that, you know, quite quite a few of our beers do use local malt. Oh. Mm-hmm. So we we grab uh, malt yeah. from uh, Four Star, not Four Star. Valley Malt. Valley, Valley Malt, malt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and Hadley. Yeah, they're great. Um, I picked up a, a delivery of malt today down in Windsor, Connecticut. So it, it's not like, I mean, we, we also use some, um, some larger, you know, water um, malts that we, we order from out of state. But, you know, for the most part, a lot of our beer is sourced, you know, locally. Um, and our labels are labels coming in from are, Westfield. So we're trying yeah. to do whatever we can yeah. to, to keep it local. Keep Certain it local. things are just out of our control, but the, the majority. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, thinking about Belchertown, and mm-hmm. um, we're both actually not originally from Massachusetts, but we 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 both work in nursing homes and we met 25 26 years ago <laughs> in in a nursing home we both had gone to college around here and when we got married we were driving around and said look at this beautiful town mm. um really and decided to build our home here and we we love it here it's a great community and that's really why why we want to try to 
stay in town and open um, a tap room and be the first tap room in Belchertown. So, I, I would uh, love to help you and support you in any way I can do yeah, that. I, I love Thank this. You. And I, I love you. that you're here Cheers. and Brian's <laughs> holding up a, a beer. What kind of beer is that? That is a, uh, a Belgian IPA. Nice. nice. And I, I love that you're here and I love that like people can get a beer here in our town yeah. made here. I yes. love it. I love it. Um, so here's a crazy kind of off the wall question. Um, non-alcoholic beers are like becoming more popular. Um, yeah. Is that a style you've ever thought about brewing? Is it something I, I have no idea like how people would even make it. So I don't even know. I just wanted to ask the question. <laughs> It's funny. We just had this conversation um, maybe last week and last week or the weekend before, because we it's definitely becoming a very popular thing. And I think it's great. You know, Odul's was the only option for years and years and years and years. Um, so we haven't actually looked into it yet, but our conversation consisted of, you know, when when we think about how we brew, and what the process does, um, we our mind we couldn't wrap our minds around how you get to that point and not have alcohol in there. So mm-hmm. it it doesn't you know chemistry wise it doesn't make sense to me mm-hmm. um, because we're you know we're so um, consistent about what we do and understanding the process of you know what the yeast is going to be doing to pr- to produce that alcohol how do you get the flavor without all those steps that we're so used to and not have alcohol in it so we we will be researching that because i think it i think it's smart i think it makes a lot of sense and i think it's great to have that option available out there for people mm-hmm. cool um how is the how is the how did the pandemic affect what you were doing did that have a <laughs> was that a big disruptor for you it was, it yeah. was, um, for two reasons, because we both work in nursing homes, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, we put a lot, especially Brian put a lot, a lot of really, really, really long days and long weeks, um, into trying to make sure people were safe. So, um, you know, our brewing slowed down a little bit and the other factor was supply chain issues. Oh, and yeah. Being, yeah, being so small, aluminum, aluminum cans, oh, wow. really hard to get, really hard to get. And because we weren't, because we're not really established. I mean, we are in the sense that we've got all our licensing and everything that we need to do legally, but not being established and really out there in the community quite yet. Um, you know, there were waiting lists for people to, to get their cans and people were pre-ordering things and, you know, right. the you know, American or can source has no idea who we are because right. we're this tiny kind of little one barrel. Yeah. So yeah, things really did kind of didn't come to a halt, but it slowed down. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what keeps you going when you're thinking, thinking about getting up another day and going out there to the shed and starting another batch? What, <laughs> what's, what's keep, what's keeping you going? Uh, it just, I just, I love, I love it. It's hands-on, you know? And I think what really I'm attracted to, like I said, is the discipline of recreating a good batch of beer, but at the same time, it's hard work. It's, you know, even on this, on this scale, nothing is really automated um, you know, you're lifting 50 pound bags of, of malt and, you know, throwing it around and you're, you're, you're milling your own grains and this and that and the other thing, but it's hard work for yourself, Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and you, you know, the, the end game is for not just personal gratification, but it, it, it's, it's, Hey, that all that hard work is something that we did. And to hear somebody say, oh, yeah, I'll give you some money for that. Yeah. Huh? So now we've actually created something valuable that people want. And I think that's the driver that keeps me going back to it is even if, even if we weren't selling it at this point, <laughs> I mean, we got to the point where we we're producing so much, we, we had to sell it. Um, but um, it, it, 
it's the process that I just, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the goal of growing into a, a bigger space or eventually sharing it with more people or, um, you know, the, the satisfaction I get, you know, you know, just going on a Sunday afternoon up to Stone Cow or, um, you know, out to Treehouse or out to Rapscallion and just sitting down and just having a beer. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's very, I don't know. It's community. Well, it's community, but it's also a great distraction from the craziness that we deal <laughs> yeah. with Monday through Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just hoping to be able to do it full time someday. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, and I love that. I can totally relate. I'm totally a process person. Like I love getting lost in a process, like oh, yeah, setting, totally do. setting one up, like, and just falling like, into like it. Podcasts. Oh yeah. Like, well, like <laughs> setting, setting all of this up for me has been about processes and building processes and like fine tuning settings. Mm -hmm. And like, it's stomping Jen will tell you I'll obsess for hours over this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but Stacy, how about you? What's driving you, um, to keep, keep going? I think it's two things. Um, I know I hopped in there and said community. That's, that's number one. Yeah. It is such a beautiful community, this, this brewing community. And, you know, when you go, Brian mentioned stone cow, I think maybe two years ago was the first time we went there. It is the most beautiful piece of property, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And you think, I thought to myself, people drive all the way the heck up here to mm -hmm. go to a brewery. And then we got there and I looked around and I said, oh my God, you know, working farm uh, turned into brewery. I, th I think it's partially still a working farm, dairy farm, though. Yeah. dairy farm. Yeah. And it's at the top of this mountain and people have their dogs and, you know, they've got this little barbecue hut. You can get ice cream, this big, beautiful barn with, you know, somebody playing the jam, the, the jambo, the banjo <laughs> <laughs> for, for entertainment. And people are just talking mm. and having a good time. There's no giant screen, you know, TV in there. People are just talking and enjoying one another. And so that kind of morphs into what my... The, the most important piece of it, at least for me, is the end game and the long term plan. And that's what keeps me going is the thought of having this tap room in town and having that kind of sense of community in our tap room. Nice. Yeah, I love that. I've been, I'll say this before, I've been in those situations and like, you feel connect. you feel connected like when you're in a like a group setting like that and there are people like milling around mm -hmm. sharing food or drinking like a you know like a cookout or something and it's just like right. you feel that connection to people mm -hmm. right and that's so important um especially you, now yeah mm -hmm. right um i want to make sure we tell people you have a merch store too on your website so like people can go and you know buy stuff um hats, t-shirts, that sort of thing. Can you want to tell us a little bit more about your merch store? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. We actually just got some new swag that I'll be um, adding to the website. And we got all that from Soundscape Merchandise, which nice. is right in town. Yeah, yeah, right in Belcher town. it local, buy yeah. local. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're great. They're They've amazing. done a beautiful job. Oh, they're so good. Um we actually got our very, you know, first t-shirts there and it, the, gosh, that was probably two or three years ago. And you know, those were like, we probably bought 20 t-shirts and, you know, gave them to family. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point we, we've got, you know, t-shirts, we've got some flannels, some fleeces, some nice winter hats. Oh, hats. Um, I love winter yeah. hats. Yeah. We've got some really great winter hats. We've got some as you can see right there, yep. some nice um, trucker hats. Mm -hmm. And am I missing anything? Um, I that I can't a baseball shirt. Sweatshirts. Baseball yeah, shirts. Oh, hoodies. 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 Yeah. That's what's that's what's fairly new. Are the are the hoodies? Yeah. Um, so that's 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 pretty much it for the yeah. for the nice. for the merch. But all right. Um, thank you. Um, and as we wind down towards our last couple of questions, I wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to tell us that we didn't touch upon. I don't think so. I had in my mind that I wanted to mention the local, local piece of it, but, yeah. but 
you guys, you, you're good. <laughs> you asked. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I would just say that if any of your listeners have any questions, even if it's just about the process, like you said, of making beer, um, or, you know, if you're a wine person and you want to learn about beer or what, get, reach out. I enjoy talking about it. Absolutely. I do. Uh, it's, it's just for me, it's, uh, it's a, I like the process of it. I enjoy talking with it. I enjoy interacting with people about it. And yeah. Cool. You yeah. can catch us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks for mentioning that. And yeah, um, folks uh, listening to this um, in the show notes. So um, in your podcasting app where you go to listen to this, go into the show notes. I'm going to have all of the links to the places we were talking about. So um, Brian and Stacy's website, um, Facebook, the Facebook page, Instagram. the Instagram. It's all going to be in all there. All the things. Yep. On the internet. Yep. So go make sure you check those <laughs> things out. Um, all right. Our last couple of questions. Um, okay. We've talked a lot about brewing here, um, but I want to know – and. And dogs, um, I want to know what you two like to do that's not involved with dogs or brewing. Is there like anything else you like to get up to? Anything what? Else? Fishing. It just sounds funny. Fishing? I don't know. Fishing? Nice. Yes. Are you fly? Are you um, fly fishing people? Or are you like deep sea? We don't have a lot of ocean around here. But other, talk to us about the fishing. So we're not we're not into She's fly a good fishing. Luck charm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we fish the quab and love fishing mm. the quab and um, in the spring it's it's great. Um, kayak fishing. Kayak fishing. Yep. Our brother in law Josh uh, yep. actually got us into kayak fishing. They live up on the North shore and, um, we've done a lot of striper fishing up there, which is just, Oh, like in the ocean on a kayak. Yes. Oh, you are brave. (laughs) Oh, it's a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah. I I grew up in that area as well. Um, like, um, by Salem, Massachusetts, oh, up in that they're area. They're from Beverly. Yeah, okay. from Beverly. So we, we go right in. Up, okay, up yep. Up at Brackenbury, Brackenbury Cove. Yep. Is up there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, you're brave. I would never get in the ocean <laughs> in a kayak. In a kayak. <laughs> no. it, it, it's, it's a little intimidating, I'm not going to lie, especially when you catch that, when you hook into that first fish. Um, and we, we do when we can, I mean, it's, you know, not, not often, but a vacation here and there, we, we've done some really nice deep sea fishing too. So, that's kind of something we nice. both really mm-hmm. enjoy doing. Fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Our last question. Um, and this one, I'm just going to ask it. Um, some people don't have an answer for this question and that's fine. Um, what have you experienced that you can't explain? So after all of these years of walking around on this planet, <laughs> what what remains a mystery to you? Oh, a mystery. Oh. Hmm. The fact that every Sunday from September to December, the New England Patriots turned me into a raving lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> still, even though we don't have Tom Brady? Still. I, I, it, I, I am the worst person to watch a football game oh, with. Oh, God, he's right. <laughs> and I, I can't explain it. I, I, it just... It, I don't know. He it, loses yeah. his mind. And the the good thing, go. the good thing about this question is you don't have to explain it. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we just there want, you know. we just want to know what it is. All right. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing that, Brian. What about you, yeah. Stacy? Anything, anything comes to mind? I don't know if I can top that. To be honest with you, um, gosh. You ever seen anything paranormal? I'm really interested That's in the what paranormal. He's for by no. The way. <laughs> no. Wait. The new Boston Inn. I didn't see did anything there. Do you ever? Uh, do you guys ever get a chance to get out on Route 57 and go out into uh, New Boston? No. No. Where's that? So get on Route 57 over in Agawam. Okay. Go up. Uh, go up through Granville and Tolland, and at the end of 57, uh, where it meets Route 8, turn uh, turn right. Go up Route 8 like couple hundred yards and there's the old new Boston Inn. A couple of women in there that uh, run the kitchen. They're awesome. They're fantastic <laughs> ladies. What do you want? You know, they, they'll, they'll hand you a booklet for a, a menu. And if it's not in there, they'll, not still, there, make they'll still make for it something for you. <laughs> but the uh, hotel is, um, I don't know, it's not a bed and breakfast. It's, it's, I it's, think it's, maybe it's an inn. 
you know, yeah. okay. but it, it is, it is haunted. Yeah. Did so, you, did you hear something there, Stacy? Did you see something? No, he's making she it didn't. up. Did you? In the bathroom. I, you know, you, yeah. I, and this is going to sound weird and take it for what it's, for what it's worth. I swear to God, I thought I was being watched in the bathroom. Mm. That's creepy. I know. I love it. Yep. So that's a little weird, like I said, the whole bathroom scene, but I swear to God, I thought I was being watched. <laughs> oh, maybe we need to take a trip out to the new Boston. Yeah, you know yeah. what we should. It's a pretty, we're loving your posters, though, too, because we're, <laughs> yeah, we're very much into yeah. just horror movies and haunted stuff and yeah. haunted horror nights and at Universal <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Here's a question for Sorry, you guys. Sidebar. Yeah. Quick question for you guys. Yeah. All right. Guilty pleasure. Oh, guilty pleasure for me. It's taking a nap. I love. <laughs> I absolutely love a nap. I'm at that point in my life where that is like that is the thing that's always out of reach, and if I can get it, I just want it so bad. Naps. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> Uh, going to concerts. Going to concerts. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Thanks. (laughs) All right. Um, a couple of things we need to say as we wrap this up, Stomping Jen. First, we want to thank, um, Stacy and Brian Rosano of Fetch Brew Co. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. You two were awesome to speak with. I learned a lot. We laughed. That's I t- right. We did I teared thing. up a few times. Um, <laughs> this was great. So thank you so much thank you. for spending some time with us and chatting. Thank you mm-hmm. for having us. We're pleasure. very appreciative yeah. and had a blast. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, our listeners now, you don't get to go anywhere yet. Oh, right, gosh. Stomping Jen? Yes. We need to say a few things, yes. as we always do. That's um, right. If you're listening to this for the first time, right, you may be. What we're asking you to do is subscribe to our podcast, right? Well, there'll be more episodes after this one. Um, if I yes, don't, if I if I don't quit, <laughs> there'll be more episodes. That's right. uh, so subscribe, download our episodes. Okay, share that, them with a friend. Tell a friend about us, right? Yes. Um, if you want to come on the podcast and talk to us, uh, we'll do it. Go to our website. Right. Yep. Go to our website. Check Get in that touch out. With us. There's a little form on there where you can request to come on. That's great too. So, um, and thank you for listening. Yes, right, Stomping Jen? Of course. Thank you. As always. All right. I think we've come to the end. No, we have. We have, we have. come to the end. Okay. All right. The end well, of the podcast. We're going to say goodbye. Um, Brian, Stacy, why don't you, um, in your own personal style, give us a goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> However you want to do it. Yep. Rough. That's, uh, that's cheers and dog speak. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Hello. All right. All right. Stomping Jen. Bye now. All right, and uh, for me, you know what I'm going to say. Bye now. It's a halting, delayed sort of... um, Oh, my God. uh, Say it. Bye now. (laughs) Bye, folks. This world of ours, ever growing smaller, must avoid becoming a community of dreadful fear and hate. Those who have freedom will understand also its heavy responsibility. That all who are insensitive to the needs of others will learn charity. And that the sources, scourges of poverty, disease, and ignorance will be made disappear from the earth. And that in the goodness of time, all peoples will come to live together in a peace guaranteed by the binding force of mutual respect and love. And love. And love. And love. I shall never cease to do what little I can to help the world advance along that road. 